June 17, 1981, the walkway at the Hyatt Regency collapsed and it was a tragic event that left 114 people dead, over 200 injured and swamped the surrounding hospitals. It's an also an iconic engineering failure that sends shivers down the spine of any engineer that has learnt about it. I'm going to go through the events that led up to the collapse, what the actual cause of the failure was, some ways it could have been picked up before it actually occurred and lessons learned that every engineer should take to heart. It's also an event that should put fear into any engineer that has learned about it, that a detail that is so small had such a significant impact and such a major failure. The Hyatt Regency had this magnificent four-story atrium with a series of walkways, and at the time on June 17th, a large event was being held inside this atrium with roughly about 1,600 people attending. There was many people all over the area and especially up on these walkways. When around at 7.05 p.m., a loud crack rang out through the atrium and the two walkways, both the fourth and the second floor walkways, collapsed with a thundering roar, blowing smoke throughout the whole atrium. Soon after the event, Jack Gillum's phone began to ring. You see, he actually works for the firm who designed the hotel. He was actually the engineer of record. So essentially the engineer that was responsible for the final design of the building. And on that phone call, there was a discussion about what had actually occurred, that there had been many people dead, many others injured. And the fact that the rescue crews were trying to get into the area to save many of the victims that may have been trapped underneath these walkways. The key information that they were trying to find at that time was the physical weight of the walkways so they could work out what lifting equipment they needed to bring into the area to better lift the walkways off the victims that were underneath them. Now, imagine getting that phone call, especially as an engineer. So this is something to take to heart. Would have shocked him and I'm sure he almost collapsed when he heard about it. It was definitely a phone call that no engineer ever wants to receive. And so Jack, having realized the enormity of the event, he quickly did the numbers about the weight of the equipment sending it off to the rescuers so they could work out what lifting equipment they needed to bring into the area to remove these walkways. He then picked up the phone, calling the design engineer that was involved with the project and a number of the key members of the firm that he worked for. They then chartered a plane and flew to Kansas City to see what they could do about this problem. As Jack was in the air flying to Kansas City to see what he could do to help out, the emergency crews then brought cranes into the area, having known the weight that they needed to lift off the victims, smashing through those big doors and began this heartbreaking procedure of lifting off the walkways off the victims to see how many people they could actually save. And during this event, this is when Jack and his team landed in Kansas City and arrived on site around 11 p.m. Soon upon arriving on site, they realized there was not much they could do. The emergency crews actually had it under control. Being there, they decided what was best for them to do was to work out why this event actually occurred. Having started their inspections, looking up at the top of the atrium, that the rods were still in place, intact, the original ones that were holding up this walkway and they're relatively undamaged. However, when they looked down on the floor to the walkways, they could see that the walkway connection was showing signs of significant damage. So much so that it had deformed and allowed the rod to pull right through the junction. But having identified potentially the key issue with the design, they then went away back to their hotels and did some quick numbers and realized this design connection was grossly underdesigned. So the walkway spanned between the two open areas on the different floors, allowing access around the whole atrium. The, the walkway specifically were being hung from the roof above through a series of rods that went down supporting the floors below it. So one of the floors was only a single floor at level three. However, across at level four and level two was a double floor. So one above the other. These were made up of a series of cross beams or cross girders made of PFCs or C-sections that were welded back to back longitudinally along the top. And the rod then passed through them, bolting up from underneath. This connection was originally designed and documented by Gillum's firm. However, their design was slightly different to what was actually being constructed. So their original design was to have a series of single rods from top to bottom, allowing the two members to be stacked on top of each other, but the rod carried both the weights. Despite Gillum's firm documenting the original design, it was common practice back in the time that that design would then be handed off to the fabricator who would do the numbers and change it accordingly 
however they want to fabricate the design. And as they were documenting the design, the fabricator, Haven Steel, objected to the original design concept produced by Gillum's team. You see, what they were looking at was how could they physically install what had actually been produced in the drawings. And they were worried about when they lifted up that first walkway at level four, as it was going up the rods, not only is it significantly hard to try and lift it up while having the rods still hanging through, it would also be significant damage to the rods as the likelihood of the walkway rocking as it was going up. So they proposed a design change to the original documentation. And this is where the major problem lies. You see, the original design was having a single rod from top to bottom. However, they were finding that too hard. So their option was to split that rod into two pieces. So one's coming down, supporting the level four walkway, split it off to a second rod and going down to the level two walkway. Can you see what the problem is here yet? The simplest way and the best way that I've heard talked about what this actually does was the idea of a rock climber. So you've got a rock climber and a single rope from top to bottom. Each of those rock climbers can hold onto that rope independently for both their weight. But now if you get to the climber below and you tie him off to the climber above, not only does that climber have to hold his weight, but he also has to hold the weight of the person below him effectively doubling the force that he needs to hold on to. And this is what this design change actually did. Have you picked up the significance of the change? What actually has occurred here? You can see something so insignificant has caused a major increase in the load to that connection. And just by the quicker the backhand calculation, yes, some modifications may have been able to add to this connection to make it work. So potentially there was not a potential problem there. However, through not following it up, you can see that the significance of the doubling of load on a connection can cause a significant event. So something so small as a minor change to a steel documentation, especially through checking the shop drawings, something significant and something you need to be careful of as an engineer. If you're getting any benefit out of this presentation, don't forget to hit the like button. What that does, it gets it out to more engineers and gives me confidence in the type of content to create for you. Now let's keep learning about what actually caused the collapse of the Hyatt Regency walkway. So that what they have done is doubled the weight on the connection at the level four junction. Haven Steel did contact Gillen's firm there was a discussion here about the proposed change and what they proposed to do. And either the project engineer or the project manager actually did some quick numbers at the time and over the phone verbally said that the change was acceptable. However, if they could submit the design change in writing so it could be officially approved and checked, this was never done. Now, this is potentially where one of the biggest factors, and this is the human-made factor here. While he did do the numbers, the original engineer, and did think that it was going to be okay, how come he didn't document it somewhere that this would need to be followed up? Yes, he did request that the fabricated firm did send in the proposed change so that it could be checked. However, there was no follow-up as the original fabricator never sent that through. So through a simple procedure, as an engineer, you could have it documented somewhere that there was a contact being had and a potential follow-up for a design change that was going to come through. So later when you were looking through the design and the project, you could say, oh, look, there is a design change that has actually occurred, but we haven't had any closeout of it. So through a little documentation procedure at this stage, this may have been able to pick up this major design flaw later on. And also Haven Steel, you see, they originally got the design, they obviously documented it up and may even intended to send it off to the engineer for final approval. Before it was actually sent off, they got way too busy and having to run these new projects, they handed off the design to a subcontractor. But what they'd done in the meantime, they'd actually documented the revised design change. So the subcontractor coming in, getting the documents, seeing that it was actually currently documented, assumed that it had been designed and approved. So he finalized the documents for construction and sent it off for fabrication. This is something to note as well. When checking through design shop drawings, especially for steel, there's not just something you should pass off flippantly. As when we check shop drawings as engineers, it's really the last line of defense. We need to make sure whatever is in that design is structurally stable. So when you're checking, even as graduates, shop drawings, you need to be careful with what you're looking at and make sure that it is structurally stable. And if you see something strange, say something, as either you will learn about a different mechanism that you may not know about, about how it actually frames up, or you may actually pick up a flaw like they did have on the Hyatt Regency. There's a major design flaw here, and it was all to do with human behavior. But what's even more disturbing about this is the fact that neither connection was ever checked, neither the original proposed by Gillum's team, nor the revised. And even the original connection 
after it was assessed, it was found to be only 60% capacity of the required design load that it needed to have. So even if it was designed and documented as per Gillum's original design, it'd still be under capacity. But then this proposed change made it even worse. By doubling the force, it was really the fatal design flaw that caused this significant collapse. So something seemingly so small as a revised change to a steel connection can have significant and critical effects to your final design. So you really need to be careful with everything you do. And so even the events after this proposed change that we had from the contractor, there was other circumstances that could have actually possibly picked it up even earlier. Soon after the fabricator had actually installed these connections, there was actually significant movement actually observed on site in the connections with one of the project surveyors actually noting it and putting in a request that it be reviewed. However, this was never followed up. What we can take from that, especially when we're on site, you may be inspecting one thing, but keep your eyes open as an engineer. Look all around for any section that you may have visible to you. You may actually be able to pick up something early on that can save a lot of people later. And just because you're looking at the reinforcement in one area does not mean that you do not need to look at the steelwork elsewhere and not just focusing on that one key area that the inspection is made for. There's also another time that it could have been picked up. When the walkway has been clad with plasterboard, the installer actually noted the deformation in the connection and actually noting about how much it actually was. Not thinking much of it, he just ended up cladding up that connection, essentially hiding the connection so that no one could actually see the degradation that may have actually occurred up until the final collapse. The investigation into the collapse took many months and one of the investigators at the National Bureau of Standards characterized the neglectful corporate nature around the entire Hyatt construction project with everyone wanting to walk away and pass on responsibility for the event. And the final report actually cited that the structural overload was from fatal design flaws into the walkways, had only minimal capacity to barely resist its own weight. The legal cases around this event would also go on for many years and potential claims exceeding into the $3 billion mark. And there was even criminal cases against both Jack Gillum and the project engineer. They were charged with gross negligence, misconduct, and unprofessional behavior in engineering. However, the charges just fell short of criminal. This was due to lack of evidence. They also had their license revoked across many states in the US and were very unlikely to practice engineering ever again. Jack Gillum did not retreat from the public eye. However, he took it upon himself to present many times about the events that led up to the event and the tragic nature of what actually occurred with him stating his purpose was to scare the living daylights out of any engineer and the impact they can have on the world around them. He would also want to hope that engineering profession can learn, change and adapt from such events so that they can be better engineers and ensure that such events could never possibly occur. For Jack Gillen, we really need to give him credit for this. Yes, he could have handled the events up to it better. As you can see, something so small had such a big impact on the people around them and something that may be often overlooked by other engineers. So do you have any other insight into what actually occurred or any other events that you want me to cover in detail? Please comment below. And if you have got some benefit out of this content, hit that like button. And if you're interested in structural engineering and want any updates, hit the subscribe button and to get all updates, you need to ding the bell. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.